<laughs> I used to hate needles. When I was little, I'd cry and moan and scream for a good hour before I'd let anyone come near me to give me a shot or take blood. It's sort of a universal childhood fear, I guess. Universal or not, though, it was probably the number one thing on the list of things I hate so much I cry list. In December of 1998, three months after I moved from Boston to New York, leaving all of my friends and most of my family behind, I got pneumonia. I was sick all Christmas break and it sucked. I got better though and with surprisingly few needles. Then the trouble really started. I was having god awful pains in my stomach. I'd go to the nurse almost every single day because I couldn't even sit up in class. I was in the orchestra and I played violin, but I couldn't stand to play. Somehow though, I managed to be the center on my basketball team. I'm not sure if I made any baskets, but I played. I would go to the doctor a few times a week, getting blood drawn and screaming or just getting examined, but not really accomplishing anything either way. The doctor said that maybe it was caused by stress, so I thought, saw a therapist. She thought it was, get this, heartburn, so she put me on Zantac. Didn't help, so they suggested that I might be lactose intolerant. No dairy and, surprise, no help. It was a mystery. Then, in February, after two months of this, things came to a head. I went to the doctor again and had another blood test. I don't remember it much. I remember that sharp, sterile scent of alcohol that almost makes your eyes water, but doesn't. I remember sitting on the edge of the examination bed, that wax paper crinkling and tearing as I shifted uncomfortably, my legs hanging over the side, my feet feet off the ground. Something was off in my blood. They double-checked, but they didn't wait for the results before rushing me to the hospital. It was nearby, but it seemed to take hours to get there. I've been there numerous times since, and it's not far at all, but the combination of agony and confusion can stretch time out to infinity. I was eight, I weighed around 65 pounds, and I had a tumor the size of a football in my stomach. My veins roll. That means that a lot of the time when a nurse or a doctor or whoever tries to give me an IV or draw blood, they miss. Combine this with my screaming and thrashing and you're looking at being stuck an average of six or seven times every time they need to draw blood. That's a lot of crying. As much as I'd like to say that all of the pain I've experienced has made me build up some sort of resistance, some sort of tolerance to the hard edge of pain that everything that should hurt doesn't because it's nothing in comparison to what I've gone through. I can't say that. Everything still hurts just as much as it always did. If I see someone in pain, I can't say, don't worry, it doesn't hurt after a while. You get used to it because it always does. It feels the same and it always will. Some part of them will always want to clench their fist, so tighten their jaw, curl up in a little ball. Nothing I can say to them right there is going to make them want to do anything but pray for it to be over. After a while though, there is a difference. If you're lucky and you try hard, you'll realize something. You'll realize something about needles that has nothing to do with needles. You'll realize that no matter how much it hurts right now, no matter how bad it is, no matter how much it hurts, you're going to get through it. And if you're really lucky, you'll realize that needles aren't that bad. You'll realize in some sort of twisted way that maybe pain isn't all that bad. You'll realize that hurting is a part of living too, and that something, even if you're not quite sure what it is, can be gained from anything and everything. Even if that something is just a memory of how goddamn much something hurt. <laughs> When that little thing clicks in your head, things are different. The next time you get that needle, it still hurts, and you still grimace a little. What you don't do, however, is suffer quite so much. You might even smile just a little bit, and maybe just on the inside, because that needle, along with everything else, is part of being alive, and you'd be a fool to just close your eyes and pray for it to be over. 
Maybe that's courage. Maybe that's optimism. Maybe that's faith. Or maybe I'm just being a stubborn fool. But that's why I'm not afraid of needles anymore. That's why I'm not afraid of feeling anymore. I mean, life's just beautiful, isn't it? That's the first one.